is a presentation of HBO Sports. Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. Coming up November 19, HBO Pay-Per-View takes you live to Las Vegas for the year's most significant prize fight, the light heavyweight showdown between unbeaten challenger Andre Ward and unbeaten three-belt champion Sergey Kovalev. To help prepare you for that event, we're going to give you a look back at the one previous time in his career that Ward faced off with a reigning light heavyweight champion, American Chad Dawson. They were fighting for Ward's 168-pound championship, and Dawson had agreed to shed seven pounds in weight to seek that title without risking his 175-pound perch. The fight was staged on Ward's home court, the Oracle Arena in Oakland. Here's how I called Ward versus Dawson, September 8, 2012, with Larry Merchant and Max Kellerman. Gentlemen, center ring. Okay. Gentlemen, you were given your instructions in your respective dressing rooms. Please obey my commands, respect the bell, and above all, protect yourself at all times. Trunks are good, touch gloves. God bless you both. Andre Ward says he tries to make his fights look easy, even if they're not. No Holy one baby, expects ready? this to be easy for either guy. You may have noticed that the referee is the well-known New Yorker, Steve Smoker. This is the second time in recent years that the California State Commission has brought in a referee from outside of California to handle the Andre Ward fight. The first was his battle with Arthur Abraham a couple of years ago. Prior to that, it had been 22 years before California brought a referee in from the outside. So bringing Smoker in, is an illustrator of how important California feels this fight to be. Meanwhile, you got two guys who can move around pretty well in a fairly small ring. Dawson fights southpaw, but he's right-handed. And Ward fights conventionally, but he is left-handed. A trend we have seen dramatically increasing in recent years in boxing. It's a rational position to take. You're throwing 75% or more of your punches with your lead hand. Why not that be your strong hand? Michael Moore, Oscar De La Hoya, Miguel Cotto. We could go on and on and on with the number of fighters who have adopted that principle in choosing to fight with the strong hand in front. between a southpaw and an orthodox fighter you can pay attention to their lead foot whoever gets his foot on the outside should have better punching position and these guys are aware of it and they keep jockeying for position I, I worry about their lead head <laughs> Ward seems issue. focused on the body early has reached to throw to Dawson's body two or three times Dawson at first looked to be trying to land something big now seems to have settled more back into a boxing stance Nice body punch by Dawson. And, and Ward turns comes right back. Ward. And again, the positioning of the feet determined who was going to land those punches in both instances. Ward tends to like to pressure and maul on the inside. Dawson knows he has to deal with that. And has come out more assertive than we've seen Dawson in uh, most of his fights, where he here is the aggressor. Not up on his toes circling, but um, doing a little more stalking and, and mild pressuring. Earlier we watched Vitalik Klitschko, a master of controlling distance. Andre Ward does that almost equally as well. I meant Dawson if I said Dawson's the guy who's being a little more aggressive early than we're used to seeing. Master Ward easily outpointed Carl Frotch to establish his superiority at 168 pounds. Frotch said he was always either too far away or too close to me. What That's a so good description about boxing. Somebody. What is so noticeable here is that Dawson has not been able to land a jab. And what Ward has been so good at is, is neutralizing his opponent's strengths. He takes away the best weapon his opponent has.
goes over with that right hand, right? Never forget about his right hand. Take a little water. Get that, get that bottle, get that bucket, get that bucket. It's coming. You want any more? Listen, left hand, keep it up. He's, he's gonna come, so it may be five rounds from now, but he's coming, okay? Look it, it's, 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 he's coming. We're gonna turn him. All the angles we talk about, I'm telling you, it's gonna fall into place like a puzzle. It's probably gonna, now he knows he's gonna have a tough problem. He can stay focused, stay resolved. But every time you make that mistake, you fill up them points and you get those shots through in the chest. Smooth, compact, relax, and, and commit right in here and finish there. Okay? Good job, well, son. Ward and beating uh, Frock and Kessler beat two really uh, good fighters in that super middleweight tournament. But Dawson Tell beat down, Thomas Adamak, and that's a big win in hindsight. Absent, he won almost every round. Um, was dropped late in the fight, got up and finished out boxing out of it. Well, and there's been a lot of attention paid to the gaudy list of opponents that Ward beat in his 168 pound tournament. But as Dawson pointed out yesterday, I didn't be just beat Thomas Adamak. I've got two wins over Antonio Tarver, two wins him. over Glenn Johnson. His, win opponent over Bernard list, Hopkins. His, his opponent list is every bit as gaudy as that of Andre Ward, if taken in the right context. Well, the good hard right uh, hook inside by Dawson. And another right hook for Dawson. Well, Dawson has gone away from trying to dominate with well, his jab inside, and trying to land his right hook. He's trying to catch Ward coming in with that right hook. He's done it three times in a row. Generally, when two guys like this meet, they have competent defenses, they're fast, they're in their primes. It's described as high-speed high chess. That's not really what Andre Ward does. Andre Ward can win ugly fights. A headbutt appears inevitable, and already Dawson has blood from a little mark above his right eye. And, and there's one of the, uh, the outcomes of Andre Ward's kind of mauling at times style. Yeah. Dawson was cut over both eyes in his second outing against Bernard Hopkins, the fight that he won by majority decision. Now he is bleeding from above the right eye here in round two. One of the reasons Ward is Andre Ward's the favorite is because there's a sense that he'll do what it takes to win, to pull out a close fight. Good right hand by Dawson. Dawson has push found off, Ward with off, three right. or four good right hooks here in the second round. After only throwing 17 punches by CompuBox count in Break, round don't one. Punch, don't punch. Step around. Ward has had the same trainer all of his career, Virgil Hunter. Dawson's had a variety of trainers, but has Break, gone back punch. to the Step one around. he likes Step best, around. John Iceman Scully. You can feel how tactical this fight is. Both punch. fighters step out, step out. would rather watch a fight of the year than be in one. Hey, don't punch, don't punch. Step away, go. Go ahead, Ralphie. Keep that hand up. Listen, that uppercut. Now listen, he's gonna he's gonna look downstairs and he's gonna come over the top of the right hand. Okay? All right, you got it. Keep your left hand up and you're good. On the inside, there's a lot of pushing, right? Let's start just like in the body with the body with the body shots. Let me get it with the body shots. With the head. With the body shots, okay? On the inside. As long as you're there, you got to make him pay for something, all right? Make him not want to be there so he can get out and then you just control it with your jab, all right? Deep breath. Catch it. Catch it. Look at it. You're looking really strong, but you still got to be loose, okay? Here's where the headbutt may have occurred because after this little... that little rubbing of Ward's head against Dawson's right eyebrow... You saw red appear right afterwards, nothing before then. Doesn't seem to take much. You watch Chad Dawson 
between rounds in the corner where his cut man, Rafael Garcia, is not only one of the best in the sport right now, but one of the best ever. Body shot there for Ward. John Scully, Dawson's trainer, said between the first and second rounds, eventually he's going to come to you. It's all going to fall in place like a puzzle. I think he wanted Larry Dawson to lay back a little bit more and let the fight come to him, but that may have changed it in, in Ward's favor. Well, I, I, I thought he was referring to that he would have a better chance of figuring out Ward than Ward would have figuring out him. That's what he was. Uh, I, I think so, but one of those, one of the ways I think he wants Dawson to do it is to allow Ward to come at him. He said uh, something to that effect in the corner. Good little left hand as they turn hey, each punch. other punch. by Chad Dawson. We're going to go into Andre Ward's corner for a moment and listen to his trainer, Virgil Hunter, as he barks instructions to his man. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Keep fainting. Be frustrated. No, no, no punch. Step, step. Step, 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 step. Ward has got a little Hopkins in him. Yep. Do what it takes. Well, in response to questions no, 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 about no, no. that coming into the fight, Chad Dawson said, I don't think Ward's a dirty fighter, but I do think he holds. And I'm hoping that the referee will break us when he does. So far, Steve Smoker seems very focused on it. Quick left hook inside by Andre Ward. Dawson's knee goes to the canvas, and Smoker will count. And Ward has an escort advantage early on with a knockdown in the third round. It looked like a body shot, Jim. No, I thought it was a quick left quick hook left upstairs. Hook. All right, okay. It was a quick counter left hook inside. It was perfect. And Dawson's right knee went to the canvas. And Dawson was shook up by that punch. That wasn't just a balance shot. It's a big edge for Ward as he gets in another quick left hook. Dawson's trying to come back. So the smaller more fighting. man, Andre Ward, gets the early knockdown that gives him a foothold on the scorecards. A little more fighting than we were anticipating through three. Hands up. You hear me? You dig back. Listen. Put some water down this thing. Deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Listen. Hands up. Keep circling, right? He's going to be running in. He's going to rush. You're going to have to take a gamble and catch him with the left hand on the way in. You hear me? There's Ward with a straight right hand to the body. Short left hand right on the chin as Dawson was a little wide with the right hook. Beautiful combination. One guy threw it wide, one guy threw it short, and the guy who threw it short landed. And the guy who was willing to throw the second punch. That's right. Landed. <laughs> Copy box numbers through three. Ward, 29 of 103. Dawson, 13 out of 61. They both go to the canvas here. And it's another knockdown for Ward. Another left hook. Right on the button. That quick left hook is causing big problems now for Chad Dawson. Go, go. No. Ward believes he's got him hurt. Oh, he Dawson's does trying hurt. to hold on. Quick right hook by Dawson in there. Lands the one punch. And here comes Ward setting up his left hook again. And again. Dawson's legs are gone. And he has to try to figure out a way to survive this at closer range than he'd like. Ward takes a couple of right hands because he's opening himself up to try to go in for the knockdown. Go, go, go. Dawson almost went down again. Steve Smoker says keep fighting. Great body shot by Ward. A hammering left hook to the body. Two more body shots. For a guy who's not a big knockout puncher, he knows how to go for the finish. Combination by Ward. 
He is ripping Dawson. Another left hook. Dawson manages to stay up. And Ward not putting himself in a position where Dawson can tie him up either. There he does, and Dawson doesn't Hunt, seem Hunter. to either want Hunt, to or know Hunter. how to do it. Dawson is trying hard. Sorry, Ward is trying for a harder for a knockout here, I think, than I've ever seen him in a big fight. 100%. He's got a chance to put on a show in his biggest fight, and he wants to do it. And he's taking risks of the kind that we've never seen Andre Ward take to try to get that knockout. Dawson is trying to throw hard shots back. Big left hook by Ward. And here comes Dawson. His legs are beginning to come back. And he just landed a big left hand that drove Andre Ward back. Still a long round here. Ward may shut it down a little bit here and back away from the full-scale assault, given the way he got hit by Dawson in that last left hand. Another body shot by Ward. Misses with the left hook. Well, Larry, and now the one-two lands perfectly. Two top fighters putting it all on the line. Right. We asked if they would take the risks in the fight that they took in taking the fight, and they're trying to go for it. This already has exceeded virtually the highest expectations for this as a fight. And Andre Ward is putting on an eye-opening performance, certainly in the last two rounds, the third and the fourth, as he unveiled that quick left hook and started hammering Dawson with it over and over. Dawson was able to get Ward's respect meantime about a minute ago. To keep him off him a little something. Two knockdowns now on the books for Andre Ward. A big scorecard advantage early in the fight. Set. You gotta keep those hands up, you hear me? Look at Your defense is good, you're moving your head good. Keep going to the side, you hear me? Make him look for you. Do not stay right in front of him. Okay? Start out this round with the jab. Keep him off balance with feints and things, okay? Don't, and if you get him again, just box him, but go behind the jab. Put the jab in his face. Just like in the third round, they both start hooks. One guy's is short, that's Ward's. One guy's is wider, that's Dawson. Ward was also trick quicker on the draw. And that's a virtual replay of the knockdown in the third round. That is because Andre Ward is willing to step in and look to hurt his opponent. It's also superior technique. Harold, how do you have it through four? Look at you. Three to one, three rounds to one. 39, 35, Andre Wood. Now, Jim, in the first round, it was a very close round. Both guys are holding. Steve Smoker doesn't like to break him up too quick, you notice, know, because of the fact that he wants him to fight inside. But be as it may, I thought that Chad Dawson pulled out the first round with some good shots. But after that, Andre Ward just took over. Got aggressive, moved inside. He rushes Chad, and he nailed him and dropped him twice. 39-35, Andre Ward. I wonder how much of Dawson's inability to take Ward's punch so far has to do with coming down in weight. We talk about the naturally larger man rehydrating 10 pounds heavier than his opponent. But you'd think it would drain a guy to come down a weight division who's already a kind of slender fighter, even at 175 well, pounds. he insisted, as you would expect, that it hadn't hurt him because he had fought at this weight for a number of years. But it's a natural uh, question to ask uh, in, in this occasion, and it's one of the reasons that so many people pick Ward. Dawson also more of an arm puncher than Ward. Ward hears his multi-dimensional attack. If he needs to slug, he can. Throw short punches with his body behind it. Dawson, unused to doing that, throws wider punches that have less of his body in it. Well, 11 o'clock so on the East Coast, in case you're just joining us, we're live at the Oracle Arena in Oakland, California, where early on, the battle between Andre Ward and Chad Dawson is unexpectedly something of a war. It began when Ward was able to knock Dawson down in the third round with a left hook. He did it again in the fourth round, and now Dawson, behind on the scorecards, has an uphill fight as he tries to impose his power on a man who's already knocked him down twice. I'm Jim Lampley at ringside with Larry Merchant and Max Kellerman in round five here in Oakland. Been a corker so far. 
In the fourth round, Andre Ward landed 30 of 76 punches by CompuBox count. Only six of 23 for Dawson. Now Dawson needs to try to find a tactical adjustment that'll put him back in the fight. He lands a straight left cross Ward on the is, face of Ward. Ward has taken Dawson's power shots very well, and Dawson has landed some cleanly in the last couple rounds. Key to this fight, as Larry Frank, pointed out away, early, away, where's around. the Dawson jab? Break, break, don't punch, don't punch. Step. Another left hook lands flush for Andre Ward. Good job. Stay focused. Keep the jab on for me, okay? You're getting a second win, aren't you? Don't worry about nothing. He's fighting that defensive fight. You stay resolved, okay? You stay determined, and you stay quick and alert. Keep fainting. Keep staying on his nerves, okay? Don't forget your right uppercut in the middle. Now on the inside, start getting your body shots wearing down. You hear me? This is where you got to pull it out of you now. This is what it's for. Fights are supposed to be tough. You hear me? That's right. Put it all together. Now listen, on the inside, he's getting reckless. He's getting over eager, right? You can pull him into body shots, all right? Suck him in. Let's go, let's go. Max and Larry, between rounds, I looked at both of you as you noted the same number, which is that Dawson has landed five jabs in five rounds to this point in the fight. Which says that Ward has taken him out of his fight obviously better than Dawson has been able to take Ward out of his. How is it that he does that, Max? Well, first of all, if Dawson doesn't have his right foot on the outside, that jab is much harder to land. And while sometimes he does, that's fleeting. Like right there he did, and he attempted it and had some success. And secondly, if a world-class fighter like Ward, who has defensive skills, is determined to take one thing away, he can do that. You're watching for the one shot. Oh, good left hook on the inside. There's another you just get the feeling hook. that Ward has meaner intentions, that he's willing to follow through with his punches a little bit more than Dawson. Way more assertive. Way more intent on imposing his will on the opponent. You see, even when just when Dawson even flicks the jab out, Ward is knocking it down, catching. And the idea is ultimately to catch and counter. You catch the jab with that lead hand and you counter with the other hand, like he just did then. In the second round, Dawson made an adjustment and switched from trying to land the jab to stepping in and landing his right hook. But instantly, upon seeing that, Ward and his corner, Virgil Hunter, adjusted by going left hook against left hook, and that has never, worked brilliantly. Never hook with a hooker, because if the other guy has a better hook, it can really hurt you. Great left hand landed for Dawson. Crowd oohed and odd as Ward's body went back into the ropes. But also, the jabber is getting out jabbed. That's right. You do <laughs> want to jab with the jabber because even if he lands his jab, so what? You'll land a few of his own, your own. You'll disrupt his rhythm. Step, step. And, and mentally, Hands how up. does that weigh on a guy like Dawson, who's used to in virtually every one of his fights to being able to dictate the terms with that jab. Now, incidentally, Ward is able to tee off out, at Andre, Chad Dawson out. when he doesn't seem to have an apparent advantage, Please, punch, and he's landing punch. cleanly step, step. with combinations to the head. Superior energy, more command, much more assertive. Andre Ward is dictating to Chad Dawson in the sixth round of a scheduled 12. Uh, Dawson has been knocked down twice. He has tried to fight back on occasion. But you wonder what he's thinking now because he's trying to now win by win on points, outbox the opponent. Ain't gonna happen. Blood from outside the right eye of Dawson. Ward coming over the top with the left hook. They bump shoulders as they pass each other at center ring.
The only time he feels confident when you're along the road, but he come forward. He's very confused in the middle of that ring, okay? Keep him in the middle of the ring, keep turning. Now, he can't get away from the jab. You see that now. So start doubling the jab around his shoulder, the quick flick, and step in with the right hand and the hook. Change the rhythm on it, okay? But don't be high. Come behind your feet. Flick, flick, bam, bam, okay? Keep it mixed up. You got to wake up, yeah. you hear me? You got to wake up. I want to see the shoulders okay. rolling. Course, you I'm always good. look good when your shoulders are rolling. Coming to run it. Chad. Copy box numbers in the sixth. Dawson, two of 16. Ward, 19 of 40. Andre Ward is well ahead on the scorecards and rolling it up now, halfway through the fight. Harold, how do you have it through six? Look at him, 59, 53, five rounds to one. Andre Ward. You know, Jim, Chad Dawson has to go to plan B because plan A ain't working. I got to tell you, Andre Ward is just, you know, he, he's using that offense. It's Russian punch. Hey, punch. Russian punch. Look, they're in the middle of the ring. Chad Dawson's got five inches in reach, but he doesn't do a damn thing. Andre Ward, rush and punch. Watch. He just rushes in and whacks him. And, and that's the story of the fight. You give him an extra point for each of the two knockdowns, he's up six points on the scorecards. Well, Jim. Ward is able to, excuse me, yeah, uh, Andre Ward is able to do that because he has quick feet. You see him constantly see right there, get position well, with his it's lead foot. It's not just foot. the feet, he has an athlete's anticipation. He's like a quick-footed quarterback in the pocket. It's part of the he same thing. He yeah. feels everything. He knows when to, to hold them and fold them, when to go and not to go. He has an anticipation of what top athletes have. And he has the kind of dimension to his Great, game punch, step, where step. as a young fighter he could push back Edison Miranda and win a brawl. As a more seasoned fighter he could outbox uh, Carl Frosch among the other super middleweights that he fought each time facing a different style. Out, and here you see the reason he was favored, it wasn't just lazy thinking. He is a, has the look of a great fighter in his prime, fighting a good fighter in his. Off his victories over Arthur Abraham and Carl Frotch, Ward was the 2011 Boxing Writers and Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year. This is his first appearance in 2012, and so far, what a show it is. Last guy in the world after getting through that super middleweight tournament. Most fighters would take on is a 6-2 southpaw with a defense. And uh, Ward's attitude is... Just get the other guy to sign on the uh, sign on the dotted line, and I'll fight him. He was not the favorite in the 168-pound tournament before it began. Mostly, that was an honor accorded to Mikkel Kessler, or some people felt Abraham. But ultimately, he and Frotch emerged as the top guys after he began the tournament by waxing Kessler here in Oakland. You know, he was brought along from the from the gold medal perfectly. Measured, 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 step up. Go. This is yours this morning, man. What do you think? Stay alert, keep fainting. Keep attacking the chest. Don't get lackadaisical. You understand? Everything okay? Nothing bothered you? Okay? How does punches feel? Okay. Turn on your shots, okay? You can do this. You train for it. Every time you're on the inside, get the body, okay? And be breathing. Walk away, take your two or three breaths, fainting, and bring it back into it. He's getting under the hook. Don't forget the left uppercut underneath, okay? Here you go. That's your chance. Come on. That is your water. opportunity. Huh? Give him a little more water. Here you go. Sure. Okay. That's so your opportunity. We're coming to win, man. Okay. Come on. We're coming. Come on, throw some. Now round eight begins here in Oakland with Chad Dawson well behind on the scorecards. And you would have to think 
trying to figure a way toward a knockout. Yeah, is he capable of really stepping it up that way? Is he getting the truth from his corner that he can't win the fight unless he scores at least a knockdown or two, well, we've much seen less him, a knockout? We've seen him in jeopardy in the past once against Jean Pascal. And when he was cut and down on points, he did step it up. But Larry, he didn't step it up out of character. He didn't become a, something he needed to be. He just became a more intense version of himself. Yeah, and he's the kind of fighter who, who when he opens the door, he tips it. He tiptoes in. He doesn't barge in. Uh, I remember watching uh, Larry Holmes and Michael Spinks, the rematch. And Larry, you said at the time, it's hard to go from being Muhammad Ali your whole career to suddenly becoming Joe Frazier. And uh, it, it doesn't look good for Chad Dawson right now. Yeah, and you wonder if he's already uh, decided that uh, I have to survive this and to go on. Has he already given up? For a fighter who isn't seen to fight at a particularly fast pace, Andre Ward is mentally relentless. He sees his advantages and he presses them constantly. The way his trainer puts it is, he processes fast in the ring. Once he sees the opening, he's going to go for it right away. This is really good inside fighting, which we seldom see today. The way Ward stays chest to chest and throws short inside punches. Speaking of an athlete's kind of IQ, Larry, not just the quick feet, but the anticipation. Ward's brain seems to work faster in there than his opponents throughout his career, and that includes Chad Dawson. There's a red mark outside Andre Ward's right eyebrow now. Perhaps the result of their heads constantly coming together. Oh. Oh. Uppercuts by Ward now. Jolting Dawson. To and your Steve, point, Larry, masterful inside stuff from Andre Ward. And Steve Smoger, the referee, lets them fight because a hand is free. Too many referees these days will stop the end no fighting point, no point. while a hand of one of the fighters is free. Short, hard uppercuts from Ward. More blood from outside the right eye of Dawson now. Hard right hand by Ward. Chasing Dawson from position to position and ripping him every chance he gets. Listen, ninth, ninth round, listen. We're not, we're not getting the decision, Chad, you hear me? You need to dig down. You need to hurt this man. Listen to me. Forget everything, you hear me? We got to dig down and hurt this guy, you hear me? Listen to me, I'm telling you. You need to hurt this guy, Chad. You need to go for the win now. You need to go for it now. Everybody stop talking. Stop talking. You need to go for the win. I'm not lying. You need to go for the win. You hear me? We don't want to just make it through. We want to win. You hear me? Let's go, Chad. Champion breed. It's time to win. Here are those uppercuts. Dawson feels safe in there because, as Larry mentioned, there's only one hand free. He thinks uh, it's going to be OK. Ward throws those short uppercuts on the inside. Yeah, and John Scully, his trainer, has, has told the truth to his fighter. And we'll see if his fighter can act on that truth. Difficult. The graphic you saw between rounds demonstrated that by CompuBox count, Ward has landed more punches in every round so far. And Dawson's numbers are going to be desultory looking at the end of the fight. There are several rounds here in which he's landed one, two, or three punches by CompuBox count. What a defender Ward is. Ward is a masterful, well-rounded boxer. We've seen in recent fights Amir Khan try the uppercut from too far away, get knocked out by Danny Garcia. Top fighters who don't have the proper spatial awareness when and where to throw punches, Ward does. Yeah, he's eager, but he's never over-eager. He takes risks when he has backup. You always feel he's fighting just a little within himself. And tonight, he's really fighting 
a little bit at times when he sees the opportunity beyond himself. Now he's straight right hand by Ward. Snap Dawson's head back again. He's had Dawson. chances where it looks like he's opened the door for a knockout, Larry, and hasn't stepped it up to score the knockout yet. What do you think of that? Straight right hand lands flush. Well, you know, we'll give Dawson credit. He's taken a lot of punishment. Uh, probably more punishment than he's ever taken in a fight. And he's still in there, but we have to see now whether he can be more than just be in the ring. That's what his trainer asked between rounds. Not that Dawson's not doing some good work. He is. He landed a good left hand just then, but Ward is able to take it. Pull your hands out, Greg. Pull it's always out. interesting to see the pure boxer in a desperate situation. I'll never forget Pernell Whitaker the night Diabelli Sertata was taking him to the cleaners for the first seven or eight rounds. And ultimately, Whitaker saw his situation and simply unloaded the kitchen sink, threw everything you could throw, and turned the fight around. I don't know if Dawson can do that. Yeah, and that was in part because... It if he won the fight, he was going to get the shot at Delaware. And he let it all go and showed that he had a, a, a fighter's heart as well as a boxer's skill. And Pernell Whitaker is a great champion. Uh, but Chad that, Dawson has yet to show that. On that night, he, he, he fished a little deeper. Walk it away. Bell, bell, bell. from behind we dig down just like with Pascal you got to dig down you got to land those shots I'm telling you hit don't try to be perfect hey, behind that quick jab with your feet moving okay good job anything bother you okay man Fetty everything from Andre Ward is compact the jab the very straight right hand puts his head in a position where Dawson can't hit it and Dawson continues to take a beating. Ward is beating him up. You would know that Ward actually fractured his left hand in his last fight. One of the reasons that it's been nine months since he's been in the ring. Harold, how do you have it through nine? Look at Jim. Eight rounds to one, 89-80, Andre Ward. Jim, I think Chad Dawson won the first round, and nothing since. No, no, I mean, you got to punch to win a round. Andre Ward gets inside and whacks him, and Chad Dawson, with that five-inch reach advantage, is not punching back. And as long as he don't punch back, he can't win a round. Eight to one, Andre Ward. Uh, I have the same score. Great, don't punch, don't punch. Step, 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 step. I think the score is academic right now. The question is, can Dawson finish the fight on no, his no, feet? No. Can Andre Ward Frank, don't score punch, a don't knockout punch, here? Well, if Dawson's goal is to avert a knockout, he can do it. He's a, a very good professional prize fighter. There were no shortage of boxing pundits and experts who observed the possible matchup good. coming in and said, you know, this will be a display of skill, but Frank, it isn't going punch. to necessarily produce excitement. Andre Ward has provided the excitement. He's, he's done the hardest thing there is to do, which is make an exciting fight against another top defensively-minded fighter hand, and Bring put, hand put hand on a great performance, a great showcase of his own skills. Break, don't punch, don't punch. Step away, step away, Chad, step away. No, 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 step away, step away, step away, hands up. At best now, Dawson looks like he's trying to look for a sneak punch rather than make something happen. Put your hand out, Dre.
break, don't punch, don't punch. There are still a lot of good fighters in the 168 pound weight class. There's a burgeoning wellspring of talent at 160, and some of those fighters are relatively large, 160s, and Ward just rocked Dawson again with another left hook, and Dawson's legs are gone, and there's the third knockdown of the fight. Three, four. That began with another crunching left hook. Yeah, I thought that one landed on the neck, and Dawson may be calling an end to this himself. And that's a wise choice. He's done. It's more, not only than we expected, of one of these fighters, but more than we could have hoped for or wished for, to see a young fighter in his prime, Andre Ward, try to move up a level beyond the just being a champion and succeeding. He reached for greatness tonight, and he has that quality. At least we thought he might. He reached for it, and he may have grabbed it. Spectacular. You almost have to beg Steve Smoker to stop a fight. And I'm not sure that isn't what Dawson did. I Let's think take a that look at what I happened. Think, I think that last left hook, Jim, may have landed on the neck and really hurt him. Here's Ward just putting his punches together. As that Larry one. mentioned. Yeah, never got beyond himself, never fought outside of himself, stayed contained, and yet put his pedal to the metal when the opportunity presented itself. And Ward created his own opportunities time and again. I think it was uh, off the top of the head that started the trouble there with the left hand. I'm not sure that it was the neck where he caught him. To tell I think it was on the chin and then on the ear. Yeah, not the neck. Those were head punches and those were well thrown punches and it was a, a barrage really there at the end of rights and lefts. Although the left hook was the key to the fight all night long. Smoger was listening. Dawson was talking and the arm went up to stop the fight. And there's the smile of victory for Andre Ward. He only knows one experience in the ring. As Winning. An, as an amateur who won a gold medal, and now as a pro who won a super six, super middleweight tournament, and then just beat the best light heavyweight in the world. Knocks he's him out. He's never lost. Are you kidding me? And turns in this performance. It's it's an almost unfathomable story. Twenty-eight years old. Let's go to Nick Cannon now, the ring announcer, with the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen in Oakland, California, it's been an incredible night of boxing. Our referee Steve Smoger stops the bout at 2 minutes and 45 seconds in round 10. The winner by TKO, the Steve.